Hi, hello. I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you for watching. So today we have a wonderful little project for you where we create this planter stand out of reclaimed lumber. So if you like these type of projects, please don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell. Very important these days. Let's get on with the project. So since this project is a reclaimed wood or a scrap wood project, I started in my pile of wood goodness and found some pressure treated lumber that I thought would serve my purpose. So I started the process by taking the rounded edges off of the pressure treated lumber planks and then rough cutting the lumber down to length. This is where I started ripping the lumber in half to get the thickness I was looking for. Now in hindsight this turned out to be fairly dangerous for the uh, shorter board. So I did switch over to the bandsaw as you can see here which actually went faster and was a good deal safer. Next step in the process is to plane the boards to the thickness that we're looking for. In this case I was shooting for a half inch. In hindsight probably would have went with three quarters. So I set up a stop block on the miter saw here and started cutting the boards to length. There's a variety of different boards that need to be cut for this specific project, but uh, they all come down to a handful of dimensions. So using the stop block is very advisable because you get all the boards the same width. As you can see here, I'm able to very quickly cut these boards down to length. Now I assembled the entire project using pocket hole screws. That worked pretty well. Uh, if you don't have a pocket hole jig, you can certainly just uh, drill the screws from the side and use butt joints. There should be no problems with that. I started the assembly by making the frame sides. There's a shorter side and then two taller sides. And so I made all three of those up front and then assembled them by attaching the side arms. I wasn't getting very good connections with my half inch boards that I had here so I was using three quarter inch pocket hole screws and uh, they were just sometimes stripping out when I screwed them in so I did end up using wood glue to hold it all together. After everything dried it's completely solid so there's no problems there but in hindsight again I think I would have chosen three quarter inch thick wood and slightly longer pocket screws to really get it the better connection between all the pieces here. I stood the frames vertically inside the clamps here and then aligned the sides on the rails of the clamps to hold them securely. This is a little bit tricky. I'm not sure there's a better way to do it quite honestly, but it worked out in the end. Once I had the bottom in place, I flipped the entire thing over and used the same process of clamping the rails with the clamps here to get the top rails in place. I attached the shorter of the two frame sides in the exact same way that I made the taller sides. I uh, used the clamps to hold the sides in place and then attached the side arms. Now, I did make a huge mistake here because I originally attached the lower side to the wrong side of the frames. So I had to take everything apart and reattach everything. It wasn't a huge deal, the glue had not dried, so it was a pretty quick process, but it was a pretty rookie mistake on my part. After I had the basic shell of the frame complete, I spent a little bit of time just cleaning up all the glue squeeze out from the initial assembly process. Now I originally was going to stain this planter, but ultimately decided to paint it. So removing the glue at this point maybe was not necessary, but just a good practice and it was fairly easy to do. After wiping down the frame, I finished the assembly process by installing the remaining side rails on the lower and the upper frame sides. With the frame complete, I started installing the bottom where the pots for the plants will actually sit. This turned out to be actually quite challenging getting them in there and getting the screws attached. It wasn't too horrible, but you can see here that it's a tight space and getting the drill in there was quite challenging. The bottom pieces are an inch thick, so that actually helped a little bit with the adhesion. I used uh, one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. 
Here I'm sanding the edges down a little bit when I installed the side so it wasn't entirely precise in many cases. So I'm just sanding down with a 60 grit, hitting some of those uh, bumps on the side so that I could move into more detailed sanding. I ended up sanding the entire frame to about 120 grit and then moved on to the painting process. Give it a quick shot of uh, air, blow off any of that final sawdust and then using some spray cans that we got at the big box store. This lovely blue green sort of teal color, very art deco. I think it looks very wonderful. It's gonna give a nice pop of color to the deck, which is mostly just brown, kind of boring. So I'm really excited by this color. I think we might actually get, make a couple more of these and do a couple other colors like pink and yellow to really brighten up the outside. I ended up giving the planter three coats of paint and let it dry overnight before putting it out on the deck. All right, well, that was the project. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a super fun build, fairly easy to do yourself. You could obviously paint it any color that you want, but this is the color that we chose to kind of give the deck a little extra pop of color here in the summertime. All right, well, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, if you don't like the video, appreciate a thumbs up anyway. We'll leave your comments down below and tell us why, and we can make future videos better. If you're not already watching me on Instagram, please do so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that ultimately become videos. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to be inspired.